Today we're breaking down the linebacker room in our positional breakdowns. Is the next NFL backer on the squad? You just find out today on Locked On Golden Gophers. You are no Locked On happens, Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden turns out, Gophers. Whatever turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. You're listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant, here to talk Golden Gophers with you Monday through Friday. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast wherever you get them, iTunes, Apple, Pod, Stitcher, you name it, follow the pod at Locked On Golden Gophers, and be sure to subscribe on YouTube. Now today we're talking about the linebacker position, but I'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster and post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. They're our sponsor for today's episode. And like I said, we're jumping into another positional breakdown today, and that positional breakdown is linebackers. So as we always do, we're going to jump into the departures right away, and the first one is the biggest one, and that is Jack Gibbons, 2022 Hula Bowl Invitational, uh, Big Ten Honorable Mention, played one year of eligibility in 2021 with the Golden Gophers. He had previously played at Abilene Christian, where he had 258 tackles, 22 and a half tackles for loss, seven sacks, and five interceptions in his four years there. Now, last year at Minnesota, he led the team in tackles with 92, with 56 solo tackles, 4.5 tackles for loss, and three pass breakups and one forced fumble. He started all 13 games. He was a key player on the defensive front, and he was honestly a large part in why Ryan Stapp has headed to Minnesota. Uh, The Gophers coaches had inquired if Jack Gibbons knew of anybody, and he spoke about Ryan Stapp, said he's the same type of hard worker, the same type of football IQ, and we've been seeing a lot of that in these early days in the practices. And so it's awesome to see that, that... stature that Jack Gibbons built up that the coaches valued not only how he played on the field but his insight into other players that could help the program. Now we see him as an undrafted free agent with the Tennessee Titans but he also this past weekend led the Titans in their preseason game their first preseason game of the season he led the entire team in tackles. Dr. Gibbons is what coach Brable is calling him and so I'm looking forward to seeing more from Jack Gibbons in the NFL. And the Gophers have turned out some NFL backers, both pre-PJ Fleck and during his time here. So hopefully that is a connection that we continue to see. And I'm going to talk about one later in the show that we hope is the next guy up. Now, two other names I wanted to mention that left the program, didn't have a whole lot of impact on the field, but did transfer to other Division one programs was DJ Gordon going to South Florida and Jaquandis Burns going to SMU. There were other linebackers that depart ooh, excuse me, departed as well. But uh, either I don't know where they ended up landing or they didn't land D1, and so we're just gonna shorten it up with that. Best of wishes to all those guys, but we're on to the next one. So let's dive into the players on this current depth chart and how we see them moving forward this season. Now, if we're talking linebackers, the first player that comes to mind immediately is Mariano Sori Marin. He's the final year of his eligibility this year. He was second on the team in tackles last year, only behind Jack Gibbons. Started all 13 games and was also an all-conference honorable mention. He had 85 tackles, five tackles for loss, three pass breakups, two forced fumbles, and an interception last season. Now this year, he's going to be the leader on the defense that honestly could take an even bigger step this coming season. 
Uh, there's been a lot of anticipation with him and seeing him produce at an all-conference level. I mean, last year, the expectations were pretty high for him, especially not knowing what Jack Gibbons was going to be heading into the season, being a fresh transfer. But he had the 2020 Player of the Week. Uh, he had a nomination of a Player of the Week and won it one week in 2020. So their expectations were high for him last year. Did get the honorable mention for all-conference. But now we're looking for that next step up. And a lot of people around the league have at least noticed that he's on the Buckkiss Award watch list, which he's one of only, I believe, five linebackers in the Big Ten to make that list of 50 players. So people at least have Mariano Sorimarin on their radar. He's a captain on the defense. I expect him to not only lead the team in tackles this year, but also to be the energy for this front seven. We're seeing it in the practices that have been open to the media over these past couple weeks. And I've seen him firing his guys up. I've seen him chirping at the offense. I've seen him really lighting a fire under this defense that can continue to produce at a top level. He could be the most important defensive player in this front seven, to be completely honest with you. So I'm looking forward to Mariano Sorimarin this season, bringing the fire, bringing the tackles, and it's going to be a good one, folks. Now let's move on to our Will linebacker. So Mariano Sorimarin plays the middle linebacker or the Mike uh, for majority, if not all, of his snaps. Now the Will or the weak side linebacker, the starter is likely Braylon Oliver. We've seen him next to Sori Marin in nearly all the packages so far when it comes to the practices that have been open. He's seen a lot of times with the ones in these practices thus far. He seems to be a lock in my opinion. And so expect to see 14 on the field next to 55. Two years of eligibility remaining and he won outstanding defensive freshman in 2019 for the team. Now, last year, he started in seven of the 13 games, so he's not new to starting. He has valuable experience on a defense that was top 10 last year. So when people are freaking out that we lost all these players, we lost Jack Gibbons, we lost, you name it, like, we have players that have had important rotational minutes and spot starts, seven starts last year. So it's not completely new, it's not completely fresh, in fact, His opportunity is just increasing, and that should be encouraging for Gophers fans to see that it's not all just falling off. Like, we're in a good spot defensively. So he has the experience. This won't be new to him, and it's just more opportunities for more production. Now, in those seven games that he started last year, well, across the 13 he played, but seven that he started, he had 24 tackles, one pass breakup, and one forced fumble. I look for that production to increase this season, having more opportunity. Then we move to the strong side backer or the Sam linebacker. Uh, You're going to see a lot of Donald Willis there, in my opinion, especially with the ones. He's often seen in a lot more of the balanced packages or the blitz run heavy packages, but he has shown he can hold his own in pass coverage. And I expect that he's going to take the first snaps on September 1st when we play New Mexico State at the Sam linebacker position as it currently stands. He played in all 13 years, all 13 years, all 13 games last year rotationally, made 16 tackles and had two pass breakups. Like Braylon Oliver, I expect those numbers to increase with more opportunity, but he's been showing fairly well in the practices, getting a lot of those starter reps. And when it's not Donald Willis, then you're often seeing Josh Ani step in at the Sam linebacker. He plays that as well. And so typically you'll see Josh Ani more in the pass heavy coverages. He is a former safety. He's got the speed. He's got the pass coverage ability, which has been really nice. Looks solid in practices. Seems like his knowledge and his IQ against the run game is building and increasing. It seems like we've seen little fat flashes of him breaking into the backfield for a tackle for loss here and there. So he's a player that definitely could rotate in. He'll probably see snaps often depending on the situation, depending on the scoreboard, depending on what type of offense we are playing against. But again, you'll probably see him more in the pass heavy coverages. He was out the entirety of last season due to injury, but like I said, he's likely to see some Sam snaps this season, and he'll probably play heavy in the special teams game as well. 
another linebacker in this rotation. So we're moving more into the twos. Josh Ani was kind of that first one that we'll see a lot of rotational minutes. Another is Derek LeCaptain. He played some running back a little bit last year for us when we were injured. Don't expect any more of that this year. But he will be a valued member of this defense rotationally. He's the second middle linebacker to come in or Mike in the rotation. He finds himself in some packages and opportunities, but Mariano Sorimarin will likely lead the charge here and see most of the production from this position. Now, he may sub in, give Mariano Sorimarin quick breathers, help out whenever called upon. He'll be probably very large in the special teams game as well, but he's a great second guy to have in the position in case of injury, in case of you name it. He can step in and fill the void, and he has shown that. So exciting player on the team. Glad to have him in Derek LeCaptain. Now, we've got two more players to really mention when it comes to opportunities and probably seeing at least some snaps in productive production on the team from the linebacker position this year. The first I want to bring up is Cody Lindenberg, he has great upside, but health has been the problem so far to this point. He's from Anoka, Minnesota, still has four years of eligibility left, so you do like to see that. Now, I've seen him work into the rotation behind Braylon Oliver at that will linebacker. He seems that both Cody Lindenberg and Lucas Finnessy have seen most of the work behind Oliver, so both will likely be given the opportunity this year at times but whoever makes the most of that opportunity is con- and whoever makes the most of that opportunity consistently is probably going to at least see their usage and their snaps increase dramatically um, so it really s- depends on who steps up most to take on the basically the two of the wheel linebacker position whoever maintains that uh, consistency and maintains doing the little things right will likely get on the field more in this position. Now, once again, I think between the two guys, Cody holds more upside, but now is the time to actualize that upside with whatever opportunity presents itself. But like I had said, the other player is Lucas Finnessy. I believe he has got some rotational time with the ones, but uh, he also works in at both Will and the mic at times with the twos. I think he'll see a lot of special teams work and rotational opportunities at the linebacker spots this year as well. Three years of eligibility left, so a lot of time with the team left if he chooses so. We played in all 13 games last season, but mainly on special teams. He'll probably continue that special teams work, but it will be nice to see him at least worked in and able to have the chance to fight for more snaps at the linebacker position. Now that's the main core rotation of the linebackers, but let's talk about the developing guys. We've got Maverick Baranowski, a true freshman that seems promising moving forward in my opinion. He's likely going to redshirt this year just with based upon that depth that we had talked about with all those guys in front of him. So he's a three-star kid from Florida, had 100 tackles for 51 solo tackles, 10 and a half tackles for loss, four and a half sacks, one pass breakup, and one defensive touchdown as a senior. That was his senior year production. In fact, his junior year, he had 123 tackles. So Tackle Monster has a knack for finding the ball, and hopefully as he grows in the strength and conditioning program, hopefully as he learns from guys like Sori Marin, like LeCaptain, like Braylon Oliver, as he learns from those guys, he's definitely a guy who could step into bigger opportunity in maybe a year or two but he could be a key guy that develops within the program as we talk about this gopher program has seen a lot of nfl players um heading into the nfl as linebackers whether that be undrafted whether that be middle picks whether that be late picks you name it they've been finding success and opportunities now I think that there's multiple guys on this team that as they progress and develop could maybe put themselves in that conversation as well. Who knows if Maverick Baranowski can get up there in due time, but there is one guy on this roster I do believe could get there in the near future, and we'll talk about that coming up soon, but let's round out this linebacker room. So other guys that are developing... Devin Williams, a name P.J. Fleck mentioned at the Big Ten Media Days. Haven't seen much from him in the open practices thus far. He did get some reps in the Rofer periods. 
Uh, he played one game on special teams in 2021 as a true freshman. I think he could possibly work into a lot of special teams reps this season, but that could be tough having seven to potentially eight guys in front of him in this linebacker room. So maybe we'll keep an eye out for 13 on the field, especially when it comes to special teams and making that travel roster, but not sure if it's in the cards at this moment in time. The last guy I want to bring up in the developing is Joey Gerlach, three-star guy from Woodbury, senior year, had 76 tackles, three tackles for loss, and 11 pass breakups, good in that pass coverage. Uh, Plus, he had three forced fumbles and two interceptions all in his senior year. You love to see it. He's likely a redshirt guy this year because there's so much depth in front of him, a guy to keep an eye on in the future. Now, unknown players, I just want to shout out because they are on the roster, but I don't know too much about them. All walk-on, preferred walk-on guys, but that's Jack Tinnen, Cade Larson, Eli Mao, and Tyler Stolsky. Haven't seen too much from these guys in those open practices, mainly scout team guys, but shout-outs to them, and hopefully they keep grinding, keep growing with the program. Now, like I said, we're going to talk about kind of those NFL gophers those nfl linebacker gophers we're going to talk about this linebacker unit as a whole and that's all coming up next but first we have to talk about our friends over at linkedin jobs the people that are sponsoring this episode and we are very very happy for it Um, as you gear up for a fall you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders linkedin jobs is here to make it easier for you to find the people you want to talk to even faster and for free all you got to do is go create a free a free job post within minutes on linkedin jobs to reach your network and beyond on the world's largest professional network of 810 million plus people Then you add your job with a purple hiring frame around your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so that way your network can help you find the right people to hire. And you can use tools like these screening questions which make it easier to focus on the candidates with the right skills so that way you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview for your position. It's why small businesses make rink, or rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. If you use LinkedIn jobs today, you'll find candidates that you want to talk to faster. And did you know every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job on LinkedIn.com slash locked on college and you can post it for free. Again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So thank you for making Locked On Golden Gophers your first listen when it comes to Gophers sports. I appreciate it. And let's dive into this linebacker room as a whole. So first, we just got to stress that this front seven, this Defensive end, defensive line, and the linebackers, they were 7th in the nation in rush yards against per game last year. With only 97.6, the only teams that were better than them were Wisconsin, Georgia, Oklahoma State, San Diego State, Alabama, and Pitt. Now think about that. Those six teams were the only ones in front of them, and you're naming teams like Wisconsin, Georgia, and Alabama and Oklahoma State, who are consistently known to be top defense-type schools. We were right up there in that grouping. In fact, we were better than some of those schools when it comes to opponent points per game. We only gave up 17.3 points per game last season. The only teams, the only teams that were in front of us there was Georgia, Clemson, Wisconsin, and Texas A&M. Those are the only teams in the entire country of all 130 F. BS football programs. Those were the only four in front of us. So fifth in the nation when it came to opponent per points per game. Second in the nation when it came to opponent yards per game, two seven hundred or two hundred and seventy eight point eight. The only team that was in front of us there was Wisconsin. The linebackers have been a major part in that, and I expect that to continue, but linebacker success has been happening here at the University of Minnesota for many years, both before Coach P.J. Fleck and during his time here. Some of the linebackers that are still in the NFL to this day, Damian Wilson playing with the Jaguars, 
or at least he played with the Jaguars last season. I can't remember if he switched teams this offseason, but he is for sure still in the league. I think he might be on the Panthers now, actually. Then you've got Devondre Campbell, all pro. Not just a Pro Bowl type guy, all pro linebacker for the Packers. Devondre, Devondre Campbell showing tons of tons of potential, but also tons of production. He has been a monster, especially for the Packers, but also before that when he was with the Cardinals. Love to see our Golden Gophers thriving. Now, other guys in the league that have come since PJ has been here, Blake Cashman, who is out there with the Texans now. Uh, injuries have kind of slowed him down, but just led the team in tackles in the preseason debut for the Texans. You've got Carter Coughlin playing with the Giants. Saw some production last year. Again, injuries hampered him, but these guys are showing to be tackle monsters. All these guys, Devondre Campbell, Damian Wilson, Blake Cashman, Carter Coughlin. You've even got Chris Barnes, who has seen opportunity with, or not, uh, correct myself here, not Chris Barnes, Kamal Martin. Kamal Martin has been with the Packers and the Panthers and had opportunities there in the NFL. He was a fifth round pick. And then you've got Jack Gibbons who enters the NFL this year as an undrafted free agent, but getting opportunity with the Titans led the team in tackles in this first preseason game. So those are your Gophers, just linebackers in the NFL right now. And I expect Mariano Sorimarin to be the next one on this list. Now, how he does this season will help his case in trying to make a dra be a draft pick. But in the end, we've seen that you can do it without being one. Jack Gibbons getting onto the roster. Carter Coughlin was a seventh-round pick, I believe. Uh, Kamal Martin was a fifth-round pick. So Blake Cashman was a later-round pick. So even if he can creep into that later round, we've seen our golfers be tackle monsters, tackle machines, just so I expect Mariano Sori Martin to be right there. And honestly, like I said, I expect him to lead this team in tackles this year. The fire he brings, the leadership he brings, those are all characteristics that are going to help him get to the league as well. So don't be surprised if Mariano Sori Marin is the next gopher that you see suiting up on Sundays. So let's continue the trend. And PJ's been helping this program continually churn out more and more NFL talent, more and more respect from the NFL team. So I don't expect that to slow down at any point. And if this defense steps up and is another top 10, even top 20, but hopefully top 10 season when it comes to the defensive statistics and being a top 10 defense, look for teams to start looking our way after churning out Gibbons, after churning out Antoine Winfield, after churning out Kamal Martin, all these guys that people maybe weren't looking at right away. You've got Coney Durr getting a shot at the cornerback position. You've got Michael Dutreadway, who just had a sack in his first preseason game for the Bears. You've got uh, Benjamin St. Just, who was a starter for the Washington football team last year, now the Washington Commanders. He was an early er pick, got drafted. So you're seeing guys not only on the offense and Fa'alele and Blaze Andrews and uh, Bateman and Tyler Johnson getting opportunities, but you're seeing it on the defensive side of ball as well. And I think Mariano Sorimarin will put his name in that conversation. We could see a couple of golfers getting their names in the conversation for the NFL for next season. And that's the next one at linebacker. Now we're going to talk about where the Gophers linebacker unit ranks for me within the conference. But first, let's talk about our friends at Bill Bar. See, Bill Bar. They have more and more flavors, and if you haven't tried Built Puffs yet, you're depriving yourselves, folks. It's one of life's greatest joys. It's marshmallow covered in 100% chocolate, and there's a new flavor. You ready for this? It's indulgent cookie dough chunk. It's cookie dough chunk covered in 100% chocolate with cookie dough chunks on top. I've had it multiple times. It's great if you put it in the fridge, let it get a little cold, and then you have it. I'm telling you folks, it is the real deal. So be sure to try that out. The cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories and have 15 grams of protein in them. And you can go over to built.com to grab a box for you and then grab a box for your family. You know you gotta have your secret stash on the side that's only for you that nobody needs to know about. So be sure to grab two while you're over there. Again, it's covered in 100% real chocolate. It's healthy, it's tasty, and it has real cookie dough chunks on top. 
Uh, so go over to built.com and use promo code LOCKED on 15 it's a different code it used to be locked 15 we changed it up and put locked on 15 so be sure to make that change it's a different one i want to make sure you get the right code locked on 15 to get 15 percent off your order at build.com again that's promo code locked on 15. all right so we're rounding this show off with how we would rank the linebacker unit within the conference now number one i've got iowa I can't argue this one. They've got Jack Campbell coming back. They've got Seth Benson coming back. Those guys will help lead the charge. And they have all starters that have three years of experience, a lot of depth behind those starters. So Iowa is at number one for me. Michigan State comes in at two. They brought in a transfer from UNLV. They brought in a transfer from Mississippi State. Plus they have Cal Halliday coming back this year. Should be a rock solid unit. Number three is Nebraska. They returned both Luke Reimer, who is a stud, and then Nick Heinrich, who combined for 189 tackles. Those two guys together combined for 189 tackles last season. They'll be a tough pair with their pair of edge rushers as well. Then you've got Ohio State coming in. They bring back three linebackers like who played starting minutes. Plus, they've got Arizona State running back, now a linebacker in Diamantre Traenum. They have a USC transfer in Gao Teote, and they have a true freshman who looks to be an absolute stud, has high expectations, and CJ Hicks, who dudes a freak. Dudes a freak, that freak athlete, and they continually bring in those types. Trace Young on the edge, Zach Harrison, now CJ Hicks. So Ohio State comes in at four. I've got Indiana at five. Now, this is one of the best positions for Indiana. Cam Jones is back, plus they have transfer in Bradley Jennings from Miami and a transfer from Kentucky in Jared Casey. Those guys should both help out. Plus, they have a top 100 linebacker recruit from their incoming class. So that Indiana linebacker room should be rock solid. Penn State comes in at six. They've got Curtis Jacobs leading the crew, plus he's got Kobe King, Jamari Budin, and a true freshman to help along the way as well. Michigan comes in at seven. They've got Junior Colson who will lead the charge for that room as a sophomore, plus they've got rotational guys from last year that are stepping into starter minutes. Michigan has that talent that they can continually and consistently churn out, so I expect them to be pretty solid at the linebacker position. Then at eight, we've got Illinois. They've got North Carolina State transfer uh, coming in, as well as Tariq Barnes, who filled in a ton last year for Hallen, Hallen, for Hanson on and off. Flying through these words, folks, right now, so trying to keep the show a little bit shorter for you. Tariq Barnes comes in, so Illinois at eight. Then we've got Minnesota coming in at nine. Now, this could be kind of low for Minnesota, but depending on how big of a leap Sori Marin takes, we could be higher in this category. But this would be a worst case scenario in my opinion. So Minnesota at nine, and then Wisconsin coming in at 10. They're losing Sanborn, they're losing Chanel, they're losing Burks, all of them are leaving. And that's gonna be a hard hit for the team at this rate with a room full of unknowns. Plus I've Herbig, I have Nick Herbig listed as an edge in our rankings, which means it causes them to fall here in the linebackers position. Then rounding out the bottom four is Purdue at 11, Maryland at 12, Northwestern at 13, and Rutgers at 14. So that's going to do it for us here at the Locked On Golden Gophers podcast. Uh, Monday, it is Monday today, and we have the final open practice for the Gophers. So you're going to want to check that out. It's at 4 p.m. if you can make it. And we'll look to see if the Gophers rotation is looking to be more solidified. We'll look to see how the guys are looking. I know on Thursday's practice last week, they were looking sharp. So hopefully we're continuing to trend upwards. We'll talk about that practice tomorrow as well as the first AP poll will be released today on Monday. We'll talk about that on tomorrow's show as well. So be sure to tune in to tomorrow's show. That's gonna do it for us. Have a great rest of the day and I will see you tomorrow.